Hello, Aussies worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question is an interesting one, something I've not really thought about much before. This comes from Paul uh, Kazmierczak, and he's writing from a European country because they have different uh, allocations on the 70 centimeter band. And his question is basically, does the element thickness on an antenna have an effect on the antenna? And the answer is absolutely yes, it does. Now, the equation used most often by hams to determine a starting length uh, for their dipole or other wire antennas is uh, 468 over the frequency in megahertz and that gives you the length in um, feet there for that. Uh, there's a different number that you can use if you're doing it in metric but let's just start with the feet. And we tend to think of dipole um, resonance being a uh, a function of the length of the antenna. It is also a function of the width of the antenna. Now, I went trying to find some more comprehensive equations for dipoles, and I looked on Wikipedia, and as near as I could tell from looking at Wikipedia, what we have there is an article that considers uh, the uh, antenna width to be infinitesimal, uh, infinitesimally small, uh, so it's just basically a mathematical line has only two dimensions, and yet it has some uh, resistance. So that is a, a, a kind of a strange thing because I could not find any equation, digging through all that there, that had any indication of the thickness of the conductor uh, in there. So what I did, I cannot uh, provide an equation that'll say, okay, with the change in thickness of the inductor, here's the change that you get in uh, the resonant frequency. But I can model it. I have Easy NEC 6 Plus, which I purchased before it all became free. It's available now at easynec.com. And it takes a little getting used to, but once you get used to it, you find it very easy to use. And so I did it for two. Now, he says in his equation, uh, indeed, my antenna length was optimal for 70 centimeter, which in his country is 430 to 440 megahertz. But the measurements were done on a PRM446, so probably that is why the thicker tube was better than the thin rod. Can I also ask why thicker antennas have wider bandwidth? I am not afraid of getting some equations in the answer or link to some heavy PDFs. The answer to that second question is I, I cannot find a dipole uh, equation that takes into account the thickness, but I can model it. Now his interest was at 70 centimeters and we will get there. But first, to show it on a very definite uh, scale where you can see what's going on, I tried it first on 40 meters. And we started uh, with a number 30 wire, which is very thin wire. Then number 18, then number 12, then number, I'm sorry, then number uh, 12, then number 10. And then we went to a quarter inch tubing, a half inch and three quarter. And you'll see some amazing things here. And they're sort of the two bonus features that come out of this that I'll save for the end. So let's take a look at the output of the modeling for the different uh, thicknesses of the conductor. I have kept the length the same over all of these models. I've just increased the thickness of the conductor. So let's take a look at these charts. So this is the actual spelling of Paul's name right here. And the basic question is, why do thicker antennas have wider bandwidth? It does not only affect the bandwidth, it also affects the resonant frequency. Before we get to his 70 centimeters, let's do 40 meters. The yellow part is the actual ham band. 
This is what you might call a reference for starting. I fixed this up and got this length, um, 34.1 feet, uh, with a diameter, a number 30 wire, which is a very fine magnet wire that would be used for stealth antennas. Not very strong. Note that I made this an optimal dipole by putting it one half wavelength in the air and so we get uh, very nice results. Now, um, let's see. Sorry about that. It bounced up and down. Okay, so what we see down here is it's less than 1.5 to 1. This is an excellent antenna. It's less than 2 to 1 across the band. Now, if we go to the next one, this is the number 18. And I want you to notice, okay, here that... The uh, frequency with the lowest SWR moves. Okay, till we get down here, this is number 18 wire, nothing else has changed. And now we go to uh, number 12 wire, and note that the frequency of resonance is slipping lower, even though the length is the same. Here's our number 6 wire, which is a crazy thick wire to put up for an antenna. Now let's go to half inch diameter uh, tubing, okay, and note that the resonant frequency is falling here, so you're going to have to shorten this to get it back into the middle of the band. And if we go to a one inch tube, good grief, we're down here uh, to where the lowest SWR is outside the band. And then I've got 2 inch diameter out here, which is a way freaky case, uh, but it puts it way outside the band. And then here is a 5 inch diameter tube that puts it way out of the band over here, although it's still 2 to 1 across the entire bandwidth. Okay, so this is what we, we get here. Let me go through them quickly so you can kind of get a little bit of a feel for what's happening. Here is um, starting with the smallest and now we move up in thickness and as we move up in thickness we get uh, changes by the way that was this one here was uh, where I went from number six wire to uh, a one inch tube and then it moves right on out of the band. Okay. So now let's take a look at the 70 centimeter antenna. So we're up in the UHF region now, but this still applies. Okay, so down here you see that we've got a, a much uh, bigger ham band. Uh, I've taken 400 to 450 here. Uh, this is number 14 wire, and I picked number 14 wire for a vertical half-wave dipole. And the reason for that is because that's about the thinnest wire you can make stand up by itself. Okay, other wires will just droop on you. So as we go to number 12, notice that we move over here. Okay, we've still got about the same curve, but look at that. Now, one thing I want to notice about this number 12 wire here, and I've done a couple extra things with this. Number 12 wire is quite stiff and would be a very common thing to make a vertical dipole out of. If we look at transmission line for windows and we take these numbers down here, of what the impedance is, 70.74 minus J 4.199 ohms, and we put that in here, we see that the SWR at the line input for 50 feet of RG213, uh, they don't have LMR400 uh, here, they have LMR600, but we're doing RG213. Um, this is the SWR at the input, at the radio. This is the actual SWR up at the antenna that comes from these right here. So we lose about a tenth of a dB, but the total line loss is still almost half of the power. Okay, and the impedance at the input uh, gives you uh, this right here. 
Now, let's take a look, and, and this is the radiation pattern for that elevated dipole. Remember I've said many times that as you raise an antenna beyond the optimum half wavelength, you get the uh, elevation pattern bifurcated. Well, here it's at 25 feet which is not a bad height for a UHF antenna, but look how bifurcated this thing is. There are lots of nulls in here. And if you have trouble hearing somebody or getting into a favorite repeater, you might just try bending the whole antenna back so it's not quite vertical to see if you can get it into one of the peaks over here. This has a very low radiation angle of uh, about, let's see, one degree, okay? So that, that's just something to think about there. Now we try this with quarter inch diameter pipe and you see that it keeps moving the feed uh, point, uh, the, it keeps moving the point of lowest SWR down in frequency. Here's uh, 0.375 uh, copper pipe, very commonly available. Here's a uh, half inch copper pipe. Note that at the top we've got a two. And now here we have uh, the biggest one that I put in there, 0.75 inches. Now why do I put copper pipe in there? The pipe is there because a lot of people make UHF, VHF antennas with copper tubing and you have to take into account this factor right here so that you can get your lowest SWR into the middle over here. Now notice in the blue box I have here 50 ohms or we could have it at 75 ohms. Now I think you should note as we go back to the very beginning down here it shows the the impedance of the antenna. Now this is at the optimal height for a dipole on 20 meters is a half wavelength. Okay, and 71.07 ohms at only 2.62 degrees, so it's nearly resistive. As we keep going up, 71, 71, 71, 71, and it'll be still, no, it's getting up 72 now, 73, okay. Now, if we look at the UHF um, vertical dipole, here we see, again, 71, 70, okay, uh, 70, 69, 68, and then here, now, I've done all of these with 50 ohm cable. Now, I want you to note something. If we were to switch that, take a careful look at this, we've got our lowest frequency here, and we're actually above 2 to 1 at the top of the band, so we'd have to shorten this up a little bit to move that up. But if you were to feed the antenna with 70 ohm coax, look what happens it brings the SWR down considerably and it increases the resonant frequency. So this is a case made right here for using 70 ohm coax to feed these antennas that are up high. Now again the 20 meter antenna is at an optimal height for it. It's a half wavelength. See, there's the half wavelength right there, I'm sorry, right there, for uh, how long it is, and this is how high it is right here. And this is a great antenna uh, across the entire band. If you go with thicker wire, number 12 is what I'd go with, um, you find that it's down below 1.5 for quite a bit. But again, 50 ohms, note down here, that the actual impedance is 71 ohms at that point, you can get uh, less loss in the coax because of a less of a mismatch. Every time you have a mismatch in the coax, okay, 50 ohms in, impedance and input, this is a 50 ohm line. Now, 
Something to know, when you're running things together that have different impedances, each piece acts as an impedance transformer. That's something you can read up about in the antenna handbook. But this is what is at the antenna, and then this is at the line input, okay? So impedance at input, 52.55. That's because your 50 feet of RG8X, or I'm sorry, RG213, is uh, causing an impedance transformation here. Okay, so all kinds, if you fed this with uh, 75 or 70 ohm in, uh, coax or 75 ohm, you'd have a different story. It would not affect the radiation pattern. Okay, Paul, there we have it. What we have done with this modeling is shown what happens as we change the thickness of the radiator. A thicker radiator uh, causes the actual resonant frequency to go down and uh, also can change the uh, impedance at a particular frequency. Although, as we noted, we, we do pretty well overall. Uh, this makes a case for using 70 ohm coax. Now, I don't know that, you know, for, for 40 meters, I'll have to try this. Uh, I'm going to go down to Home Depot and get some of the RG6, which is a, I think, 70, 75 ohm coax, and try running that uh, into the radio and seeing what we come up with, because it may be very, very interesting. Uh, we might find a lower SWR and so on. Now, uh, in a video that I did about Y50 ohms, 70 ohms was considered optimal for receiving and about 35 for transmitting, although the, um, these antennas are reciprocal in the sense that their SWR is the same on uh, receiving or transmitting. So there you have it, Paul, and I, I hope that helps answer the question, although I can't provide you with any fancy or easy dipole equations that take into account the width. Uh, if somebody out there has some, please send them to me at, at askdave at A-R-R-L dot O-R-G. I'll get that from you. I'd be very interested uh, to see more. So there you have it. Have fun with that. Have fun getting your antennas in the air. And until we next meet, 73.